Listen, over the last four years, we've built something really special here in our state. It was because of all of you, because of the wonderful people who live here. When I wake up in the morning to do my job, I do it based on our state's motto, which is under God, the people rule. I remember that in my role as governor, it's my privilege to serve you, to honor our constitution, to keep government limited, and to protect the American ideals of freedom and opportunity. Over the last four years, South Dakota has been an example to the nation of the power of those ideals. We have proven that when leaders remember what their authority is and what their authority isn't, that that's when the people have the opportunity to succeed. Thanks to all of you, we are going to keep proving it for the next four years. In South Dakota, we found the opportunity in a very difficult time of crisis. We could have done what every single other state did. We could have fallen in line. That would have been the easy choice to make. Other governors in the country were making that choice. But my dad always said, we don't complain about things, we fix them. We could have complained about the difficult choices that were in front of us, and frankly, it would have been easier to complain, to follow the pack, to do what everybody else was doing, to live in fear, to shut down our states and our communities, but instead we got to work. I learned everything that I could about this virus. I told people what I knew and I trusted them to exercise their personal responsibility to do the right thing. I knew that we would get through this together. There were hard days and it wasn't fun to get kicked in the head every single night by the liberal media on the national news, but it was the right thing to do. It was right to follow the Constitution. It was right to defend freedom. freedom. But, but it also gave us the opportunity to build the strongest economy in America. Four years ago, I told you that we would focus on strong families. I told you we would grow our state, expand businesses, bring people home that had moved away, but they needed opportunities right here. South Dakota now has the fastest growing incomes in the country. We have the fastest growing housing market in the country. We have the most new businesses of any other state. Our population is growing 10 times faster than the national average. Our kids, our kids have the best educational outcomes in the country, which will lead to better careers in the future. And we have the strongest economy in America. But more importantly, when our, we have a strong economy, but more importantly, we're reminding the nation that is built on freedom and that we have built this state on the power of the people. We're showing that when families are given the opportunity to make their own decisions, it puts food on their table, that it makes it easier for them to buy clothes and shoes for their kids, creates more opportunities for them to pursue the career of their lifetimes. It makes a difference and that it matters. And now Americans are looking across the country and they're looking to South Dakota as a shining city on a hill. In states across the country tonight, they're electing Republican governors because they want their state to look like South Dakota. And it's not, it's not just our state, our strong economy that they're pointing to. We're setting an example by fighting for our kids, by keeping them in the classroom, by protecting them from racist rhetoric like critical race theory, and we're guaranteeing that only girls are gonna play in girls' sports. We're setting an example by defending our constitutional rights. We're including and defending freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and our Second Amendment rights to defend ourselves. We work hard to take care of moms and to take care of kids and families at every stage of life and through whatever situations they may face. Every single life is precious and we're setting an example by standing up for life. 
Now, a lot of people, a lot of people talk about freedom. They talk about Republican principles. Well, here in South Dakota, we actually did it, and it worked. South Dakota is standing up for freedom and opportunity, and we are doing it by remembering that under God, the people rule. Now, that's not the way that Democrats in Washington do business. They're following an extremist agenda set by people who do not love this nation, do not share our values. In fact, freedom and opportunity mean nothing to them. They care about control, and they use fear to get it. They found a figurehead in Joe Biden that they can control, and the man in the White House today is not the Joe Biden that we knew 5, 10, 15 years ago. I may not have agreed with that Joe Biden politically, but I didn't doubt whether his mind was his own. Make no mistake, the nation that is unfolding around us is Joe Biden's America. And it's not the nation that I want to leave to my kids and my grandkids, like Miss Addie, who's tired, isn't she? Yeah. There's violence and crime in our streets in America. Our border is overrun with drugs and human trafficking. It's reaching all the way here to South Dakota. And on the national stage, they have lost sight of the basic ideal of peace through strength. We have ceded our position on the global stage to China and Russia, nations who hate us. Under Joe Biden's leadership, families are poorer than they've been in decades. In his America, our streets are not safe for our kids to play on, and in his America, we are closer to nuclear war than we have been in generations. More government is not the solution to these problems. More government caused these problems. In my first two years in office, I got up every single day and I worked to move South Dakota forward. I was on offense. I could focus on solving problems. Since Joe Biden got in the White House, we've been on defense. I've been busy insulating South Dakota from the attacks on our freedoms. We stood up against Joe Biden. We stood up against Joe Biden and his unconstitutional mandates, his vaccine mandates. We sued him and we won, and we will keep winning. We will continue to protect girls' sports, and if he tries to take our guns, he can take them from our cold, dead hands. I just want to be very clear. Joe Biden's America is not the America that I know. It's not the America that we know and live right here in South Dakota. The America I know is founded on constitutional liberties. We stand for the national anthem and we sing it proudly. We honor our veterans and our men and women in law enforcement and military. We defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We know that America is the land of opportunity and not one of hatred, racism, or division. And we believe in more freedom, more liberty, and we can put ourselves on the best path to solving our own challenges. That's the America that I know. That's the America we have to continue to defend. And tonight, Republicans, it looks like they've taken back control of the House of Representatives. We've got a great shot at taking back the Senate, too. And Republicans should look to South Dakota as an example of the America that we are all trying to build together. The reason that I care about this state so much, and I care about this country, is because I want it to be as great and as free as I had the opportunity to grow up with, with mom and dad. I had every opportunity available to me because of this state and because of this country. I want my family to have the opportunity to do that too, my kids. Um, I'm so grateful for Brian and for his support in this role of serving the state of South Dakota and what he has done to go out and, and visit with all of you and talk to you and be a true partner in serving the state of South Dakota. I'm thankful for Cassidy and Kyle and Miss Addie and that the fact that they keep giving me grandbabies. I've got another one coming in January. They should have lots and lots of babies. Um, Kennedy and Tanner, who just got married and we'll be expecting, well, we'll give you a little time. Um, <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm sorry. And then Booker, you are not allowed to have babies yet, okay? All right, just so you know, men can't have babies, okay? All right, good, no. These kids, 
Yeah, I don't know if anybody was confused on that, but it's the truth. Um, these kids have grown up with you. They've been transparent with you. They love you. They live here. Their lives are here. Our lives are here. And they are so grateful for the support that you've shown each and every one of them. Many of you have gone to their events. You've supported them, written them cards. And we are so grateful for the blessings of being with all of you. There's someone else that ever since you've gotten to know me has been my, by my side as well. From the first moment I was going to run for Congress and made the decision, I called up this woman and I said, listen, I'm going to run for Congress and I don't have any money. I don't even know if I can pay you, but will you get in the pickup and start driving with me? And she quit her job, got in the pickup with me the next morning and was gone for months. And she's been by my side ever since. And I want to thank Beth Hollitz for all that she's done. For me. You have no idea how many rodeos she had to go to and <laughs> treats she baked to take to schools. And um, I have an incredible staff and team. I can't believe how hard the governor's office staff worked on this campaign and volunteered at night and on evenings. And they drove across the, straight, the state to, to help. Um, Mark has been my chief of staff and has been incredible in bringing everybody to the table, the policy team. And this campaign team that has helped us and led us has been incredibly uh, goal-oriented on focusing on you and talking to each and every one of you. There's too many to mention, but I just so want all of you to know from the bottom of my heart how much I love you and I appreciate you. And I'm so blessed to have a team such as this. I also want to thank my lieutenant governor. My lieutenant governor. Larry and I became friends probably the first or second week that I was in the legislature and I got into an argument with Brock Greenfield that got pretty public and Larry decided to invite me out to dinner that night because I didn't have any friends. I think he literally said to a few people, let's take Christy out to dinner because I think she doesn't have any friends. So that taught me a lesson about fighting with Brock Greenfield um, and the value of having friends and serving with them and making sure that when you pick a lieutenant governor that he has integrity, that he has principles, and that he understands what is so, so special about South Dakota. So please thank Larry and his family for supporting us as well. To all these folks, I just want to say you have been by my side since day one, especially my family. We have done this as a team. We're going to continue to serve together. I'm encouraged by what the next four years bring, and I know that we can weather whatever challenges we may face as long as we support each other. Amen. In the next four years, South Dakota continues and will continue to set an example for the nation. America needs us. America needs to see what is possible when under God, the people rule. Yeah. Tonight, the people of this amazing state have elected me to serve you as another, for another four years. And here's how I plan to continue setting that example for the nation. We're going to remember that the solution to our challenges lies in less government, not yeah. more. Yeah. We're going to recognize that strong families are the key to strong communities. We have to realize that taxpayer dollars are not our own, that they belong to the people. And this next legislative session, my number one priority will be returning $100 million of tax cuts to the South Dakota people, which is the largest tax cut in our history. Let's cut the sales tax on groceries. The fact is, we can afford to do it. Just be this last week, we learned that we already brought in $80 million more in taxes this year than we had predicted. We have the money. It isn't our money. It's the people's. So let's give it back to them and help them fight off this crazy inflation that we're facing in Washington, D.C. We're going to strengthen families by creating opportunities for paid family leave for our private citizens. We will grow child care opportunities in our state by tackling regulations that get in the way of caring for our kids. And we're going to create an opportunity for child care workers 
to get benefits for their employment too. We're going to strengthen our laws to make sure that no foreign country improperly controls our food supply or our farmland. Yeah. And we're going to strengthen our workforce by making it easier to get a job if you move here. We will continue to defend integrity in our elections as well. We're going to continue to grow South Dakota and we'll continue to advance our freedoms. But I don't want South Dakota just to be an example of freedom. I want us to be an example of respect. We need to be honest with each other and have real candid conversations. We can't just try to be louder than everyone else with different opinions. We need to listen to them. We need to understand them and we need to respect them. There is no governor in this country that is more willing to listen to people and to work with her people than I am. I trust my people. I have trusted our people and I've learned from my parents at a very young age to be a teachable person. They told me I could learn something from my harshest critic. And that's a matter of respect. In South Dakota, we respect each other. We greet our neighbors with a smile on our face. We welcome visitors with friendliness. And that, as much as our natural beauty, is why people keep coming back here. South Dakota respects our law enforcement officers. We honor their service and their sacrifice and realize everything that they do to keep us safe. We don't think that they are perfect, nobody is, but we recognize the value that they bring to our society. We respect our troops and our veterans who stand up for our freedom. We respect our teachers, our doctors, our nurses, and our professionals who go above and beyond to take care of those around them. We will continue to respect people around us, and that respect is crucial to the foundation of our American civil society. Our form of government is meant to be thoughtful and deliberative. When Ben Franklin was leaving the Constitutional Convention, he famously told a woman, our nation would be a republic if you can keep it. We can keep our republic by having honest, respectful conversations about our disagreements and working together to solve problems. While freedom and respect won't solve all of our problems, they will set a better path towards where we want to go. We should never be afraid to share our views or to hear from other people. It, this is just another way that South Dakota can set an example going forward. I want to thank you all for being in this fight with me, for being a part of what South Dakota is doing and how we're growing. But I also want to leave you tonight with a few words of encouragement from one of our greatest American leaders, one of my favorite presidents, the 26th president, Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy was famously a rough rider, a man who famously said, speak softly, but carry a big stick. He was a boisterous man. He knew what he believed and would passionately argue and fight to defend it. He knew the value of fighting for what you believe in. Teddy famously said this, it is not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out the str that the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, though errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows that in the end the triumph of high achievement, or who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place should never be with those cold and timid souls who neither knew victory nor defeat. Thank you all for being in the arena with me. Because of your efforts. Because of your efforts, tonight we know victory. But I do want to take a moment to thank my opponent, who wasn't victorious tonight, but who did call me right before I took the stage. Jamie and I had a very different vision for our state. Tonight, the vision of less government and more freedom won the day. But I do, I do want to congratulate him for stepping into the arena. To the people of South Dakota, thank you for trusting me. Thank you for being trustworthy. Thank you for living up to your personal responsibility, individually, as families, as communities, and as a state. 
In the last four years, we built the strongest state in the nation, and we did it together. Yeah. In the next four years, I promise you the best is yet to come. Yeah. And the hard work starts tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you so much. And may God bless the great state of South Dakota. Have a wonderful evening. You've been listening to Governor Kristi Noem give her acceptance speech as she has been reelected to lead the state of South Dakota, the first female governor of South Dakota, the 33rd governor.